Free BSD reviews, tutorials, and gaming. Right, we'll install uh, Apache first. I'll just make the screen a bit bigger. There you go. Now, I'm going to install via ports, but I would recommend you install by packages if possible. The reason why I'm doing ports is the rest of my system was being compiled that way, and also I wanted to show you that you can change a lot of the uh, default options uh, before you install, something which you can't do with a pre-packaged package, as it were. So I don't want to change anything now, but this is a possibility if you want to. There's lots of things that you can tweak before you actually install Apache. I'm just going to go with the default, so uh, it's going to start the install process. Right, we're finished. Uh, all done. I'll make it bigger again. Now we're going to actually uh, we're going to edit the rc.com file so we can start Apache when uh, the system restarts. Also allows us to uh, issue the uh, service apache start command right uh, apache 24 underscore enables equal yes and that'll do clear the screen right next up we're going to start apache there you go no problem and now, now we're going to install the MySQL server package, or from the parts rather, uh, version 5.6. Again, it gives you the options that you want to change. And we're installing it from parts again. The reason why I went with uh, 5.6 is that presently on the system, I had the uh, MySQL uh, client uh, version 56 and it was actually strangely enough tied to a lot of um, KDE Plasma uh, in, uh, packages so for me it's just it was just easier just to install the 56 version right it's just doing its things right Now that's done. Again, we're going to edit the rc.com file. And we're going to put the MySQL enable. This also allows it to start on, um, on reboot, but also allows us to start it via the command as we did the Apache command earlier. Service MySQL. server start well, there you go now we're just gonna do a little bit of setting up of the uh, mysql uh, server so mysql underscore secure underscore installation set root password Uh, yep, of course. Diddly diddly da. And diddly diddly da. Remove anonymous users, yes. Disallow root login remotely, um, yes. Because I'm not going to be using it from this machine. Remove test database and access to it, of course. Unless you need it, of course. Reload privilege tables now, yep. Right, okay. All done. Painless so far. Right, just clear the screen. Now I'm just going to look where PHP 73 is because that's the latest one that I have in the uh, ports tree. So, port master. See, so yeah, again, if you were using packages, it would be different. It would be PKG install PHP 73. Uh, so if there's anything you want to trade, I'm normally I would perhaps turn off personally IPv6, but I'll leave it on this time. Oh. 
if this is too long an install, then I will fast forward. Hopefully, yeah. Some of you might be noticing that I've changed uh, some of the settings in the make.conf um, to optimization three. Now, of course, you really shouldn't change anything in the make.conf file, um, and certainly not change it to all three because it can lead to instabilities. For my system, I don't know whether I've been lucky. But I have enabled uh, optimization 3 with actually very little uh, detrimental effects, so uh, I don't know what, you know, I'm going to leave it as it is. But I don't recommend you do it yourself. Right, okay, now we're going to look for some uh, PHP modules. And it's the same process as we did for the uh, the original PHP install. I like to put, if I know the name of the file um, that I want to install, but I don't know whereabouts it is, I just type in where it is and for me it, it, it shows up. So I'm not going to install, I'm installing these one by one. You can skip this if you wish, or but they don't take long to install. Of course, if you did PKG, like I said before, you could do it in all in one line. Or you could do the port master in one line, I suppose, but I like to do it individually to know each one gets done. Well, that pulled in another one, actually, by, uh, by asking for that, which is not too bad. So, probably not going to do more than this. Enable uh, X11. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it here. I forgot one. I'll have to do it. Right, that's done. Now I'm just going to copy the configuration file, which is an example one, uh, over to a more serviceable user one. So the php.ini-production uh, configuration file. We'll copy that over and rename it. Some of it's missing on screen, but it's the php.ini. Now I'm just going to edit the uh, Apache file. You need to set up um, one or two things in that, mainly to tell it to recognize um, PHP extensions. So if you scroll down and find Give me one to look for it. There we are. If you find this one, it's the directory module uh, section, and you need to add in p uh, index dot php, and then go down to the bottom of the file and add a couple of sections which will tell the Apache to uh, recognize the PHP extensions. So files match uh, backslash dot php string. And then we'll just add the set handler to tell it uh, what to do with it.
And then we also need to have one more. If I can do it. This is this PHP S. Again, you know, you need to set the handler uh, application. I'm just going to copy that because it saves time in retyping. I'm going to do that. And then just change it a little bit. Yeah, just add the source on. And close it. I'm not the world's fastest typer. Whoops, I forgot a bit. Files match, that's right. And that should be it. Clear it again. Right then. Let's start it. Well, we're going to restart it with the added different, you know, added configuration changes. Yep, no problem. No error messages, so we must have done something right. Now we're just going to try and install Webmin. Webmin's a very extremely useful um, web browser based uh, admin tool. I mean, yeah, you can do things command line, but it gives you an overall view in one place, so it's very useful. Now we're just going to install it. It's going to uh, pull down uh, some one or two different uh, authentications, etc. Uh, related to that. So hopefully it won't be too big of an install. If it is, I'll just fast forward. That wasn't too bad. Now we just have to edit the uh, rc.com for the third time just to tell it to start um, Webmin again from when it reboots or you need to start it via the command line. If you try and start it via the command line and it's not in RC, it's not going to work. Unless you put one star, but that's not ideal. As it says, we need to set Webmin up. Uh, leave it. I'm going to leave a lot of these as defaults because they're relatively sensible. So I'm just going to leave this one as default. Uh, again, if you need to change anything, now's time to do it. We're going to leave it on the default port. Uh, login name, obviously, you put your login name. I'm going to leave it at uh, admin. You can change that. And password, you can make any password you want. And yeah, we'll use SSL. Why not? Okay, that's really painless. That SSL means that we have to put the HTTPS. Service web min start because we put it in the rc.com. Oh, Cron's complaining or something. Exit out of that and let's start up the browser. After we've cleared the screen first, of course. Now I think I'll type the browser this way. Right, C monkey, string, ampersand. Right, C monkey should start up in a minute. Uh, there we go. It's a little bit slow. 
Now we're just H H T T P S uh, colon forward slash forward slash one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one zero four, which is the uh, machine IP. Uh, and then we're going to go for port ten thousand. Uh, I'm going to allow this certificate because it's on the local machine. Add exception, etc. And type in the username, which was uh, admin, if I remember correctly. You can change it to whatever you want, but admin is, is easy to remember this way. And the password that we put in. And click remember me, because I can't be bothered to do it many times. And there we go. And we're in, hopefully. Yeah. Now we're in webmin, which you can now change uh, settings. Look at system specs. And show notifications, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like that. And you can now basically set up what you want. A development server, a database, whatever you want to do with your freshly installed FAMP. I know technically I didn't show you how to install FreeBSD, but I mean, I'm going to assume you know how to install FreeBSD. But this is how you install the rest of it. I could have done it quicker using packages, uh, but I decided to use the... Uh, for me, I prefer to use ports. You get more customization and you can tweak a few things. Uh, so if you want to do it that way, then fine. And that's it. Um, for this, you can set up your firewalls, storage, whatever you want to do. However you want to administer it. It's absolutely brilliant. Hopefully, this will show you a little way to do it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.